All righty, guys. So we are now going to start part three of the notes. Um, we've talked about um, the various parts of a theater. We've talked about the various parts of a stage. Now we're going to talk about different types of stages. Some of these stages you may have seen. Um, we actually had one type here at the school in the NPR, but I'm also going to show you some other kinds of stages that some of you may have seen if you've gone to a concert or if you've gone to a sporting event. Uh, you didn't realize it, but there are different types of stages, okay? I want to remind you as we take these notes, please don't write anything down until I tell you what to write down because I don't need you to write everything down, okay? So with that being said, said let's get started with part three here the different types of stages so the first type of stage let me get, oh. all right let me see if i go back one oh all right so the first type of stage is an arena stage okay and as you guys can see from the photo here the stage is in the middle and the audience sits on four sides okay this is actually used in theater where the performers play here, but some of you may have seen this type of stage if you've ever gone to, I don't know, a boxing event, or if you've gone to an MMA event, this is the type of staging, right? Where the, uh, you know, the fighters are right in the middle and the audience is all around, okay? So this right here is called an arena stage. All I need you to put in your notes is the words arena stage, and then all I want you to put is this, audience sits on all sides of the stage. That's all I need you to put for it so that you know in your mind, an arena stage, okay, the audience sits all around the stage, perfect, on all sides of the stage. And if you guys can remember, give me a thumbs up or a I'm done in the chat um, once you are done. But again, you're gonna just put, a. Uh, by the way, I would have, if I was taking the notes, but I want you to do it however you would do, I would put types of stages on the left-hand side, and then over on the right-hand side, the first type of stage, I'm gonna put an arena stage, the audience sits on all sides of the stage. So I'll let you set up your Cornell notes however you like them, but that's how I would do it. So again, an arena stage, the audience sits on all sides of the stage. And I have the picture here, so you have a little visual. Here's the stage in the middle, and guess what? The audience sits on all sides of the stage. By the way, not only have we seen this type of stage in the world of sports for boxing, but basketball, tennis, but also plays. Zion, are you all good? You're kind of the person that lets me know to kind of move on. Perfect. So the first type of stage is an arena stage. The second type of stage, oh, and I just wanted you to see kind of a picture here. This is a more colorful picture in an arena stage. But as you guys can see, look at this, the audience sitting all around and then the main space down in the middle. So the second type of stage is called a thrust stage, okay? And as you can see, the stage actually comes out what you don't see back here is this would be kind of a proscenium back here, and then the stage actually thrusts out, and the audience sits on three sides of the stage, okay? So for this one, I just want you to put thrust stage, and then here, audience sits on three sides of the stage, okay? So a thrust stage typically comes out from a proscenium. Some of you may have seen this type of stage if you've ever gone to a concert, and you'll see like the lead singer like start to walk down towards the audience, that becomes a thrust stage situation because the audience is now on three sides of that performer, and then the band is typically behind them in the proscenium part. So thrust stage is the second type of stage. The audience sits on three sides of the stage. And again, give me a little thumbs up when you're done or I'm done in the chat. Again, all of this is in Canvas for those of you that need that extra support. I'm also creating a video right now. By the way, more than likely, we'll be turning in these notes next uh, week. So you'll have plenty of time to get those done for those of you that didn't. I'll be creating a little assignment section in Canvas that will have the videos for all three parts so you can make sure you got everything and then you're going to simply submit your google doc to me by the way through canvas don't share the doc with me because i'm not i don't grade that way i grade everything through canvas zion can you let me know when you're done 
Awesome. And then I think the next thing I got here is a little picture of a thrust stage so you guys can kind of see it in action, right? So back here is kind of the proscenium, but then the stage kind of comes out here. And as you guys can see, the audience sits on all three sides. Now I'm going to pause here slightly because I want to talk about your assignments for this week. You're going to be watching a video. The first video that you watch uh, this week for your assignment is about an arena stage, okay, which was this one right here. And then the second video that you're going to watch is about the thrust stage. And by the way, I may have gotten those mixed up, but either way, you're going to be watching a video about an arena stage and a thrust stage. And then I pose a question to you. If you're an audience member and you are watching a play on a thrust stage, um, what is going to be beneficial about that for you as the audience member? Like what's going to make that experience more enjoyable or cooler for you when it's a thrust stage situation? Okay. So, and then the second part of that question is, What's the worst part about a thrust stage, okay, from an audience perspective? So if you're watching a play and it's in a thrust stage, what makes it not enjoyable and what makes it enjoyable, okay? And again, the videos that I sent you are going to be a little bit more detailed about each one of these stages so you'll have a better understanding, okay? And then, like I said, the other video is going to be about an arena stage. What's cool about this type of setup for an audience member and then what's not so cool about this type of setup for an audience member? Okay, so you're putting yourself in the perspective of the audience watching a production on that type of stage. Okay, and again, guys, your the video will be a little bit more detailed about both of those. Uh, and again, please do those assignments. Some of you cannot afford to not do any more assignments. We are running out of time with regards to, you know, how many weeks we have left till the end of the semester. And some of you need to take full advantage of everything we've got left. Okay. The next one you guys are probably very familiar with because this is the type of stage we had in the NPR, okay? We call this one the proscenium stage, okay? And this is a traditional type of stage where the audience sits on one side. They sit right in the front, right? And they watch the proscenium, which looks like, you know, kind of a picture frame um, where they watch whatever the production is, okay? So for this one, proscenium stage, the audience sits only on one side of the stage. Again, this one you're probably more familiar with than any because, well, it's what we had here at the high school. Some of you, if you've ever gone to watch a concert, typically it's a proscenium stage where the band is in front of the audience, okay? But sometimes they add a little thrust part where they add a little walkway down the middle. And then the, the lead singer could come out and, uh, you know, connect with the audience a little better. So proscenium stage, all I need you to put on this is the audience sits only on one side of the stage. Okay. And as you guys can see, here's the stage back here. Here's where the audience sits. Again, that's the most traditional type, probably the earliest type of stage as well. Again, give me a thumbs up or I'm done when you see this and by the way i'm going to take this time while you guys are doing that to maybe take a quick picture of the room so i know who is here by the way don't leave early it lets me know when you leave you're like oh walters is going to take the picture and then i can just take off nope because i see it it lets me know everything i need to know all right oh yeah come back zion okay yeah guys if that ever happens He's going to come back. I'm going to wait for Zion just because he's the only one that comes on camera and lets me know. <laughs> that uh, we are done. All right. So we just have a few more slides, guys. My goal is to maybe get us out here a little bit early. You know what? I'll just keep it on the next one. So by the way, here's another little picture. Um, oh, there you good. Can you hear me now, Zion? Yes, I can. Beautiful. All right. I'm, I was waiting on you. So I'm going to move on now. All right. And then here's the proscenium, guys. You should be very familiar with it. This is the type of stage we're going to have when the new theater gets built here. Um, you know, pretty much every high school has a proscenium type of uh, stage. That's just kind of the traditional one. All right. So now the next kind of one is called a transverse or profile stage. This is where you have the stage in the middle and the audience sits on two sides okay so you can just put seating on two sides we call it a transverse or profile stage can anybody in the chat let me know like an example of when you've seen this type of stage before like where the stage is in the middle and the audience only sits on two sides can anybody give me an example of when you've seen something like that before i can think of two things that come to mind 
Anybody like to take a guess? Good, a debate. Okay, perfect. What about in the world of fashion? Have you ever seen this type of stage in the world of fashion? Like where the yeah. models come and they walk out, right? And then they do a little turny turn and go back. You'll see that um, in the world of modeling. What do we write down? Uh, you can put transverse and profile stage right here. It's seating on two sides. It's the, uh, the third little dot. Anybody else seen this type of stage before? What about in the world of sports? Come on. I'm a big fan of this particular sport that has seating like this, especially at the high school level. Right? Basketball. I'm not talking on the arenas. Football, right? I mean, in football, we've got, what, the home and the away side. And then the... Uh, no, I bet none, none of you ever thought of a sporting field like a stage, but it is. It's a stage. It's, a, it's where we watch something, right? Give me a thumbs up when you're done. Zion, are you done with this one? This one should have been pretty quick. All right, moving on. And here's an example of it. See, audience sitting on two sides over here, and then the stage is like right in the middle. So I wanted you guys to kind of see the different types of stages. Now. Those four that you saw are the most common types of stages. What I'm about to show you now are some different types of stages that you don't, that aren't as common. You don't see them as much. Um, so I thought I would just take the opportunity to kind of show you guys those stages. So the first one is kind of what we call an environmental stage. I actually don't need you to write anything down for this one, but in all honesty, you can put the audience anywhere. It's, it's very flexible. I mean, the audience right here is kind of, but you can look at the little stage space. It goes everywhere. It's not, it doesn't even make a, um, a you know, a, a shape that you're used to. It could be anything. You could switch this around. Okay. A lot of environmental stages are created outside because you don't know what your outside space is. Like when you're legitimately outside, you could put the audience sort of anywhere and they're, and they're very flexible along those lines. So let me give you kind of an example here. It's kind of an old school one, but look at the audience is sort of just sitting anywhere. They're sitting on the rafters, they're sitting everywhere, and then the, the players are down here in the main spot. So um, again, it's just very flexible. You can create any type of space you want. So I don't need you to write anything for that one. I just wanted you to see it. Now, a black box theater. This is a, another type of flexible space. Now, what you guys may or may not know is this is the type, this is a real classroom for a theater. When the new theater gets built, they're going to have a proscenium stage as the main stage, but then they're going to have Walters' classroom. And Walters' classroom is going to be a black box theater. Most high schools have these for the classroom for your theater teacher because it's a legitimate theater space, not a classroom like when you guys come here. Um, and I'm so excited about this um, because this is going to be in the new one. But they're typically found in high schools, and they're called a black box theater because they legitimately have no windows. They're typically all black and the spacing you can set up, it's flexible. I can put the chairs anywhere. So let me give you an example. This is what a black box theater, this is kind of what my classroom is gonna look like and it looks a little blurry, but I, I, I can put the seats anywhere I want. I could create an arena stage. I could create a proscenium stage in there. I could do a thrust stage in there. It's just a, a room, it's a box and I can create any setup I want. And as a matter of fact, I'll actually be doing productions inside this black box theater. Not only on the main stage will I be doing plays, but I also, for a more intimate feel, will be doing uh, plays in the black box theater. So again, it's a real flexible space and I can create any type of setup that I want, okay? So guys and gals, just a little reminder. Um, your videos for this week, are one on the arena stage and the second one is the thrust stage. And I'm asking you to really utilize your mind. If you are an audience member watching a production on that type of stage, what would be awesome about that experience? And then what would not be awesome about that experience? Okay. So again, the videos aren't going to necessarily give you the answers to those questions. I want you to think about it. Use your own brain. Put yourself in the position of an audience member and go, if there were people performing up there, what would be cool about this and what would not be cool, okay? And what I don't want you to talk is anything about the actor's performances, okay? Like how they're acting. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the staging of it, okay? What makes it cool? What makes it not so cool? 
okay? So I'm going to go ahead, and by the way, guys, that, I think it's pretty, that ends part three. Pretty simple. There wasn't much to that one. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.